The ski jumper, Primoz Roglic, has won his second Criterium Dauphiné, after the one he conquered in 2022, the race where our beloved Danish anchovy had hid in the shadows, only to appear fully formed like a beautiful swan in the Tour de France, crushing the double champion of the Saunier Duval team. Perhaps needing to indicate that he is the only true alternative to the two great monsters of world cycling, Rogler this time has done some crushing of his own, or at least some of the time. The Red Bull team leader humiliated the great Belgian hope of ever winning a Tour de France again, focusing Avenepool, who, like Primoz, was coming back from an injury in the Basque country, and who was thrilling everyone after his thorough preparation in the hypoxic rooms of the Sierra Nevada. The ADHD pill addict was not only beaten by the Slovenian skier, but also by some new beings from outer space who always, always appear at the Dauphiné, the test race par excellence throughout history, where we've already seen some fantastic guinea pigs like Armand de las Cuevas, Jonathan Vortis, Peter Kenyug, or the legendary Marc Padin crush their rivals. Let's analyse what this race has given us, but before, let us also remind you that you can win a good Van Rysel bike in our new spectacular prize draw. And all you have to do is subscribe to our new Celebs Highlights movie channel, go through the videos, watch them until the end, and leave a comment with some kind of good solid reference to the video to show that you've seen it. And then, at the end of the Tour de France, we will mention there the winner. Subscribe now to Celebs Highlights. There's a link attached to this video, and remember, the more videos you watch and the more comments you leave, the more chances you have to win. Participate now. <laughs> Back to the race. The Dauphiné started just as we like it on this channel, with two Danish victories. They're always Danish. The first of them by one of the men of the season, Mats Persson, who achieved his eighth win of the year against Van Rysel, proving without a doubt that he is in an impressive vein of form at the moment. It was precisely Bruno Amirai, a giant of the Van Rysel squad, with previously just victories in time trials, but there he came so close to winning the second stage after 139 kilometers of breakaway, where he humiliated the rest of his rivals thanks to those incredible bikes. And I remind you again, you can win a Van Rysel if you support us on our new channel. Unfortunately for him, the much-improved over the last month Uno X squad did a spectacular job, and with 300 metres to go in the fog they caught him, so that the most attractive mustachioed rider of the peloton, Manus Kort Nielsen, got his first win in this Norwegian team, a team to watch closely. However, the real show came on the third stage, with the finish at Les Estables. Many expected one of the favourites for the final victory to take the stage, but along came the first guinea pig from outer space, Derek G. Yes, friends, the guy who'd done nothing in cycling outside of Canada was trusted by the Jewish tycoon who'd been conned by a white Kenyan with the same medicine and treatments as his supposed marquee signing of Disneylandis Infinestra fame. Derek had undoubtedly been the sensation of the Giro d'Italia 2023. He finished second in as many as four different stages of all types and conditions. He got into almost every breakaway. He performed against the clock. A real spectacle that helped him to land a new and bigger contract. And at first, this may have seemed like another scam carried out on the guy financed by a country at war, but no. This Canadian guinea pig wanted to shine in the Tour de France, and so he's chosen this Dauphiné to test his preparation, and has ridden like never before. With a body similar to that of Enovit Inderain, Derek G crushed Roglic in a finish that chopped savagely upwards. And not only that, since he had not fallen below 20th place in any of the other two stages, he was placed as leader of the Dauphiné, achieving in one go his first victory in Europe and his first yellow jersey. A jersey that he would defend very well the next day in the long time trial at Neulise, where focus in Avenapool fulfilled the predictions and defeated the specialist Josh Tarling and the Slovenian skier and the Gregario of Gregarios and another Spanish giant who, at the time, we did not know but would also become a guinea pig from outer space. 
Of course, the race went on to make a fool of itself on the next day, with a road that looked more like a 1940s Formula One track than a professional cycling road. It was as if there was oil in the middle of it, and half the peloton went to the ground, and Juan Ayuso abandoned the race, and two other Rabobank team riders, the Dutchman Kruisvik and Van Baal, they fled by ambulance with injuries, and possibly waving goodbye to the Tour de France at the same time. Richard Plerger, who spent the day handing out bidons to rival riders to try to get support for the anchovy, he couldn't believe his eyes. Once again, his riders were out of the game, and all because of poor organisation. This will have consequences. But the only one at that moment was the neutralisation of the stage. So everyone simply had to wait for the decisive mountain days, with up to three summit finishes. And with Focusin only holding a slender lead of 33 seconds over the skier, there was all to play for, and pretty soon we would see that that would not be enough. In the first mountaintop finish at Le Colle d'Alvar, very close to the Juplan, Quickstep's Pizza Hut boy was completely dropped with five kilometres to go. Ahead, there was a group that included Roglic, Carlos Rodriguez, Vlasov, Ciccone and Jürgensen, and also the two big guinea pigs of the edition, Derek G and Oya Lascano. These two giants were known previously for their impressive ability as rulers, good on flat terrain or even on small hills, but never on long, sustained mountain passes. Lascano, in his last campaign with the Benesto team, was shining just as Enovit Inderain did in these French races, and he hung with the best in an absolutely hilarious fashion, while G continued to mock the White Kenyan. Oh, and by the way, if you want us to make a video about the White Kenyan's Dauphiné performance, just let us know in the comments. Now, the rider of no fixed nationality of the Red Bull team finally understood that he had to work for Roglic, especially if he wanted a good salary in the coming years. And after first trying solo, he then helped the green jersey to ride away with Ciccone in the final meters and take his first victory with the Red Bull team, and in the process acquire the leader's yellow jersey. Focusin came in shattered, 42 seconds behind, and according to Patrick Lefebvre, the reason was clear, Havenapool is fat. <laughs> That's right, so many pizzas and commercials, they haven't been good for the Belgian. As far as his boss is concerned, he's still two kilos over his ideal weight. Marion Rousse's alcoholic rival says that his disciples should stop filming so many documentaries and start losing weight, now! And he obviously didn't expect his weight to be 100% at this stage, but in his training camp at Isola 2000, he has to follow Poggy's example closely and get in shape at once, if he doesn't want to fail on the biggest stage in the Tour de France. Now, the next day, Focusin was exhausted at the San Juan Ski Resort. Red Bull did everything possible with Vlasov to unhook the second-place rider, and again he was shipwrecked, disastrously so, losing almost two minutes to the group of favourites, a group in which the two guinea pigs from outer space were holding their own together with Roglic and Jorgensen and Ciccone. Even Lascano wanted to make an attack in the final kilometres, and it came very close to landing his first victory in a mountain stage and in the best possible scenario. But his future teammate at Red Bull, Rogler, did not want to leave even the slightest crumbs, and so he returned to achieve his second stage win. The Slovenian is testing himself for the tour, and he wants to prove that he can be a genuine alternative. Something that with the power close to 6.6 .6 watts per kilo, we can see is a very, very real possibility. G and Lascano, on the other hand, had by far their best mountain performances ever, with 6.5 watts per kilo, making it clear that their positions in the final classification are more than deserved. But there was still the final stage to come. The riders would ascend the Col du Collet after 150 kilometers of continuous up and down. And with the weather improving, we soon saw that three consecutive high mountain efforts were too much for Roglic. Once again, Focusin was quickly eliminated, along with the Spanish guinea pig and the stateless Russian, who simply couldn't have been as brilliant on this climb. While Ciccone was trying to make a breakthrough, three riders in the group were still in good shape. Matteo Jorgensen, the Gregario of Gregarios, who was performing the same tactic that led him to win the Paris-Nice, 
Derek G in the best moment of his life, and Carlos Rodriguez, the Spaniard who never seems to be there but whose stamina always allows him to stay with the best in the final days. However, it was the already hilarious Derek G who made the group selection in his best ascent ever, and little by little, Rogler lost ground, and so the war of differences began. The Slovenian was practically one minute ahead of Jorgensen in the overall classification, and then surprisingly Ciccone started to work alongside him. Up front, Rodriguez would collaborate with a highly motivated Jorgensen, who could now win Paris-Nice and the Dauphiné in the same season, in purest white Kenyan style. Overall, we witnessed a rather horrible Dauphiné in terms of the level shown, despite breaking records of the previous decade, but it was very exciting in terms of the final victory. Jorgensen tried, but ultimately gave away the stage win to Rodriguez, the diesel rider who has an impressive number of wins given his characteristics. Rogler, thanks to Ciccone, held on to win by 8 seconds the overall classification. He humiliated Focusin, that's true. But if the only reason you beat a Rabobank Gregario was because he was inferior to you in the time trial, if that same Gregario was superior to you in the mountains, then those feelings of victory must be rather bittersweet. But look, Rogler, if Le Monde can celebrate a Tour de France win by that same time difference, you should enjoy your success. You've earned it.